All right, look at all you guys piling on in here. Nice to see so many of you and meet you, uh, I guess, in real time. I was gonna say in person, but it's more we're just in the, in the exact same time. I get to say hello. So it's great to be here and great to be serving every single one of you today. We're gonna do a, a little bit of the work. Um, I'm very, very excited about that. Hey, Eric, hey, Gary, hey, Heather. Hey, everybody that's on live, and if you're watching a replay, uh, that's great too. I love you just as much. Uh, would have been awesome to have you live, but you know, life, hey? So while we're waiting for everyone to join us and, and get on to this impromptu live, why don't you tell me where you're all from? I've seen uh, a lot of you in our, in our group and things. Hey, Victoria, nice to see you. Uh, does everyone know where the chat box is? Hey, Katie, it's good to see you again. Here is the chat box. Hey, Loza, nice to have you on. All right, cool. And if you're watching this uh, in real time on Facebook, I've just posted a uh, Zoom link underneath that you guys can all use to, to join right now. So uh, feel free. Uh, Feel free to just to hit that and jump on here live with us. Cool. All right. People are all over the place. North Carolina, Philadelphia. Cool. I'm here in Australia, uh, Gold Coast, and we've had an incredible amount of rain here the last few days, which I think uh, we all wanted. But uh, we, we're ready for it. We're ready for it to, uh, to let us at least get out for a little bit. Columbus. Salt Lake City, you're in Melbourne. Awesome, Gabrielle, good to have you here. Cool, so we're gonna get into some awesome stuff and uh, I don't want to spend too much time um, before we get into it. So let's, let's dive right into it. We're gonna be doing some, some real big things today around the superconscious method. Uh, I wanna explain a little bit about it and then we're gonna have uh, an experience, a recode. It, it's so funny, if you're watching this on the, the replay, so many people are just vibing about our replays and I believe what's happening uh, is a morphogenic field, which Rupert Sheldrake talked a lot about uh, in, in a few of his books and how you can create a field effect, which actually makes it, the replays stronger than the live. So for all of you that are here on live, we get to create a morphogenic field, a structure that for those watching the replay, get to access and create huge shift. And it is, it is so cool, isn't it? Give me a yes if you think it is really cool to kind of be on the forefront of, you know, cutting edge science. Who thinks that's cool, by the way? Because I do. I think this is, um, it is so cool to see this shift, to see this happen, to connect to the field. I mean, it was only the 90s that we decided that to, to look at the brain closely and, and realize that it's, it's not hardwired. It's actually completely... Uh, uh, malleable and changeable and, and we use the the metaphor of it being plastic which is cool so very very exciting so let's get into some stuff uh, some some work and then we'll, we'll actually have an experience so so here's a question that I had and I've had for a long time which is you know why why don't people have the the life that they want you know like why don't we have it I mean it seems Every year, you know, more uh, technology comes out, more ideas come out, more books come out. You know, why is it that we don't, you know, have it? And, and the answer is, is it structure, okay? See, structure. The answer is structure. Structure has integrity, okay? That word says structure. I'm not sure why there's a bit of a bubble here on. So that says structure. So there's structure. Okay, can everyone type in structure just so that, that everyone else knows what that word is? Structure. So, so structure has integrity, meaning that the way something is structured is, is the way that it's, it's going to kind of exist. So, so, for example, a balloon has a certain structure. In fact, if I, just, if I just flick a balloon, the balloon's going to move. It has a certain structure. Whereas, you know, a building, if I try to flick or even push a building, Nothing's going to happen because it has a different structure. Now, what, what's interesting in life, a lot of us have structures that, we, they're, that are working against us. Uh, for example, a rocking chair is a certain structure. And uh, who's ever felt like their life is a little bit like a rocking chair? Forward and back and forward and back and forward and back. Like that's a, 
that's a certain structure or, you know, like a pendulum. Who feels like sometimes in their life is a bit like a pendulum. They move towards it. They come on back. They move towards it. So that's a structure. Who would prefer that the structure of creating was more like a car for them? You know, they just put the foot down and it just moves forward. <laughs> you know, there's no backwards. It's just forward. We call that an accelerating structure. Now, structure can change. You know, if we take water, for example, water can have the same molecules, but the structure of it can change. Does that make sense? So it's the same. You're the same, but the structure is different. So, you know, we can have ice, we can have liquid water, we can have steam, you know, and, and plasma as well, another type of um, water. So the different structure. Does that make sense? It's just structured differently. And so... That's what's true here, is we all have a desired reality that we would like to be at, and then we have a current reality, desired reality, current reality, which is where we are. And, and so what happens is, uh, you know, the personal development world and life and everything else says, hey, you know, you're here and you want to get here. And, and my question is, is, well, why are we all not just here? Uh, you know, I think it's ridiculous to to think about the amount of advancement we have and we're still a society, or, uh, you know, unsatisfied with what we have. Does that make sense? We've got to get to the next place, the next place, the next place. I mean, how is it true with all the advancement that we've still got depression and everything else happening? If you think about it, you know, you try to tell, uh, you know, our ancestors, yeah, look, I can, on a hot summer's day, I can just walk to the freezer and get an ice cube. And if it's cold, I press a button and there's heating and, uh, yeah, and I can, you know, there's this thing that moves really fast. Like, imagine putting like a hundred horses in one thing. That's how fast I can go. A hundred horses. You know, so, so we've got so much access to all this stuff, but why is it true that our current reality isn't our desired reality? We are, we're still in this place and we don't know how to create. Well, the truth is, is that we have a competing structure that's holding us back. Okay. And so we're in this current reality here and we're trying to get to this desired reality, but we have things that are behind us holding us back. And, and the first thing that's holding us back is, uh, is beliefs. The next thing is identities. The next thing is emotions. And, and these, are, these are holding us back. They're not allowing us to, to move forward, uh, you know, the next thing is a, is a need to take the correct action. The next thing, you know, is, is past events. Also known as trauma. Past events, things that are, that are there. Uh, and there's just, there's so much holding us back. Unwanted circumstances. Circumstances. Can someone type these in? Beliefs. Can someone type these in for me? Beliefs, identities, emotions, correct action, past events, unwanted circumstances. And last one is negative vision. Beliefs, identities, emotions, correct action, past events, unwanted circumstances, and negative vision. And these are all sitting here, okay? And so... So yeah, beliefs, thanks Katie, beliefs, identities, emotions, correct actions, correct actions, past events, unwanted circumstances, negative vision. Did everyone get that? Type in a yes. I want to make sure everyone got that. Thanks Gabrielle, thanks guys. Cool, because this is very, very important to understand. It's why the world needs a heck of a lot of coaches in this work, okay? Because what happens, it's like there's a rubber band pulling us to our future. But then there's also a rubber band holding us back like that. And you see the difference here between here and here. This just becomes our life. We move there, then we move there. Then we move there, and then we move there. We never really escape it. Is this true? Who's seen this with others and yourself? We never really escape our reality. We've got all these goals, but they're always like, there's some sort of ceiling, like, why don't we have it? Why don't we have it? Why don't we have it? And, and the truth is, it's because we have these two competing structures. And I want to explain to you how this works, okay? So the first thing is we start moving towards our desired reality. 
but we have beliefs. We have beliefs in our current reality that say it's hard. What, what are some other words? It's hard. I can't do it. It's difficult. People will judge me. So we have beliefs. So instead of going for what we want, we focus down and we try to resolve. We try to resolve our beliefs. And this is one of the most messed up things in personal development. Instead of going for what you want, they have you start looking for these beliefs. And instead of just saying, you know what, I just go for what I want, we end up going down here and working on ourselves and becoming addicted to just fixing and working ourselves. This basically says, I'm broken, I gotta fix these beliefs in order to have this, you see? I don't have the right belief structures is what we think. So we go the other way. So as soon as we start moving, we have beliefs that pull us back. What about identities? Guys, there are six identities that, that really create sabotage, okay? And, I, and the, the first one, okay, is not good enough. Can someone type this in? The first identity is I'm not good enough. The second identity is I'm unworthy. The third identity is I don't belong. The fourth identity is I'm not capable. The fifth identity is I need to be perfect. And the sixth identity is I'm insignificant. Thanks, Katie's got them there. Did anyone else get them? I'm not good enough, I'm unworthy, I don't belong. I'm not capable, I need to be perfect, and I'm insignificant, and I'm insignificant. Now, I'm gonna explain in a little while where these identities come from, but we have these identities here. Now, the problem is, is our identity that we have in the current reality does not equal the identity in the desired reality. I'll give you an example. Is for me, I had an identity of not being good enough. So every time I created something that was good enough, my identity didn't want to die. See, my identity said, I'm not good enough. And so then I coded up, if I have this result in my life, well, guess what? Then I'll be good enough. Then my identity goes, okay, so... If you then good enough, well then I'm, I'm dead. That identity, that part of me has to die. And guess what? That identity doesn't want to die. So it never lets you have it because you're not it. You're not in it. Your identity fights you and will always pull you back. Give me a yes if that makes sense. Who's ever felt an identity conflict where your identity won't let you have it? Where's everyone at? Yeah, your identity, like I'm not that, I'm not that. I mean, I don't belong there. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of that. I'm not significant enough to do that. I'm not capable to do that. And we have that as an identity. And so it pulls us back. It pulls us back. Yeah. So, so the next one is we have emotions, right? So for me, I grew up in working class society, right? I grew up in, who, anyone else, type in a me if you work in class. Who else grew up working class? Yeah, I grew up working class, right? And by the way, that's an identity too. Well, in working class, the emotion is about not having it. The emotion is I'm scarce, I gotta work hard, I gotta go for it. Guys, the emotion of having what you want is usually completely different to the emotion that you're in right now. A lot of people say, well, Chris, how did you manifest millions of dollars and all these things? And I say, well, you know, the first thing, I had to give up my emotional addiction to scarcity, my emotional addiction to frustration. I had to shift from being a striver, someone going for it, to somebody already having it, okay? So our emotions are out of alignment, out of alignment. Meaning, our current reality and our desired reality are out of alignment. So our emotions then pull us back, you see? The next one is we always are looking to take the correct action. We always think that there's a magical action, a correct way to do things. And 
What I've found is looking for the correct action a lot of times becomes our excuse. See, when I see billionaires and I see people that have created big things like Oprah Winfrey or JK Rowling of Harry Potter or Jim Carrey, like they really did just simple things. They just went for one, they just did, that was really simple. They didn't spend all this obsessive time looking to try to find the next, the next way to, you know, somehow hack the system or beat the system. It was that they just did it. Yet I find a lot of us uh, will dabble and we always change course. So this person, they're always looking for the correct action. And so instead of just going for what they want, they always are going to all these different things, right? They always, they never master anything. Does that make sense, right? Get out of your head, says Beth. Yeah, they always are. Oh, this, 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 all these things. The next is past events, okay? So we're trying to, one of the things we do when it comes to past events is that we put a higher probability. You like my t-shirt, Spiritual Millionaire? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, am I wearing it today? What does it say on the back? Is it Super Conscious Creator? Or, I don't know. I don't know which one I'm wearing. Spiritual Millionaire? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we, we got heaps. We got some really cool apparel. Yeah, cool. Okay, so past events. Past events. Just because it happened to you in your past, you put a higher probability that that will then happen in the future. But it doesn't change its probability of happening. Let me, let me put this in a different way. You have a higher probability of reading a book while walking and dying than being, uh, than being in a terrorist attack. There's a higher probability of dying of reading a book while walking than being in a terrorist attack. Yet, because a country has had a terrorist attack, it focuses on that more instead of saying, you know, stop reading and, and walking. And so it doesn't, increase, doesn't change the probability. So here's what I want you to hear is that the probability doesn't change. See, some people get this idea, oh, well, I attracted this bad thing this one time, so that's likely to happen again. Does that make sense? Guys, give me a yes if you're getting that. It doesn't change the probability, but, but then we take these different actions because of some past events. We put a higher, a higher weighting on things that we have already experienced than other things. And we also ignore what, what could happen. The next is unwanted circumstances, okay? This is very tricky, unwanted circumstances. Instead of going for what we want, we say we don't want this. And what happens is if you, if you only take action on unwanted circumstances, so you say, I don't want this point, don't want. Then you start moving this way. This don't want here is always going to be part of the structure. It, it doesn't just disappear. It's always there. So I see people who get really rich or they create the right relationship or they, they lose the weight, but they never were going for something pure. They were going because they didn't want to feel bad about themselves. So now they just feel bad about themselves in a, in a better looking body or bad about themselves with a relationship, right? And so eventually that wears them out and they pull themselves back to the current reality of a life they don't want. They never leave it. Does that make sense? Choice by reaction. And then the last one is a negative vision, okay? Which is a really, a really interesting thing to say is they don't actually want the desired results. The unwanted circumstances is, is just being in reaction. And the negative vision is where they don't actually want this. They don't want this. They have just created this desire based on what society has told them, what they think others will think of them, what their parents, is like that. It's not a true thing. It's just negative. It's not theirs. It's just, it's done for someone else and therefore you always sabotage it. And so, so why am I telling you this? I think this is the biggest problem in, in society right now is that our structure is the structure is the problem. So this is a problem 
focused structure. This, this is why healing doesn't work for most people. This is why personal development courses don't work for people. When I see people go to course after course after course, and then they, they go to healer after healer after healer, and they wonder why they're not actually creating what they love. It's because their current reality is the problem. Structure has integrity. Structure has integrity, and in this structure, you're just trying to fix the current reality rather than creating. This is the working class paradigm. It says, your life right now is no good. Your health is no good. You're no good. So you need to come out over here. That structure, my friends, is why we don't have it all. And it's a big, 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 big part of our work. It, structure has integrity. And just helping people do what I'm about to explain to you makes all the difference. So who's enjoying this, by the way? Who's enjoying this? By the way, what I'm sharing up here is why personal development doesn't work. Because personal development says you can fix yourself to be able to get somewhere. And that couldn't be further from the truth of creating it. So this is what I did, by the way. This is what I did, is I went around, you know, trying to fix myself. I did Hope Alone, EFT, NLP, hypnosis. I changed my diet. I, I took plant medicine. I did this, spirulina drinks, this pill, that thing, turmeric, going to retreats, going to this, thousands of dollars, all these things, trying to fix who I had been to somehow mean that that could I have what I want. I tried to, tried to create based on an identity that could never, ever have it. My identity was working class. I wanted millions. I could never have it. I tried to then shift with emotion. So frustration, pissed off, scarcity, trying to plant seeds of doubt and create confidence. I then looked for different actions. Maybe it's this, maybe it's this. Read books, action, action, action. And what happened was all I did was move a little bit forward and then a little bit back. A little bit forward and then a little bit back. So let me ask, how many of you want to know the answer to this riddle? How do you then create? Who wants to know the answer? Because it's a big shift. And when I, when I learned this and made the shift, I was able to create a $5 million business in two years, move into a multi-million dollar house. I've got my own beach. I wrote three best-selling books, featured in a movie with Tony Robbins, the Dalai Lama, married the love of my life, and kept it. And kept it. And kept it. So instead of being in the problem-solving reality, we need to be in a creative structure. Now, when people send me in their testimonials about how their diabetes shifted on a recode or how they couldn't walk and, you know, then they did a recode and then they were walking, it's because I get them into a creative structure. So what, we, what we've got to do is the current reality must equal the desired reality. The current reality must equal the desired reality. I am truly, truly oops, satisfied now, and I choose to create. You must first get truly satisfied in the now, and then create. What you've got to understand is your desire, desired reality doesn't make life better. This is the hardest one for us to understand. I used to think, 
When I was a millionaire, then everything will change. When I got married, when I did this, everything will change. This is what everyone in the personal development world makes and tells you. They say, when you are healed, your life will be better. When you make all this money, your life will be better. Your life will be better. And the truth is, it'll be exactly the same. Exactly the same. Because you turn up to that new reality. You turn up to it, <laughs> right? And I remember this. I seen people, they were so sick and unhealthy and everything else. They'd say, when I'm healthy, when I'm healthy, everything's going to be better. So they would start to get health. And you'd see them, you know, they would change their diet and things. But guess what? They were still annoyed. They were, and so it wouldn't stick. They had to recreate their current reality because that's them. You see that? Their identity had to pull them back. So it didn't matter, they would always just recreate this until they enter the wizard's gate. I'm gonna teach you the wizard's gate today. Until they enter the wizard's gate of no desire and no resistance, and that's when they're able to do it. And, and I want you to get this, because if you wanna create healings in other people, or healings in yourself, or if you wanna manifest your dreams, you gotta understand what we're told is just complete rubbish. The personal development world literally collapses you into a reality that says, now's not good, and when you get here, it will be better. You're not good. You've got to download codes. You've got to have ayahuasca. You've got to go to healings. You've got to think a certain way. You've got to eat a certain food. And if you do that, you'll have it. One of the, one of the biggest ones I see is you've got to feel abundant in order to make money. And it's so rubbish. I have met so many people with lots of money who don't feel abundant. They don't feel abundant, yet they have money. And then I see someone who feels so abundant and they're sitting on a beach with no money trying to get someone to sign up to a you know, $100 healing that they want to do. True? It's just not true. It's just not true. And so in the creative structure, what all the super successful know, okay? And guys, this is coming from a, a, a huge obsession I made a lot of money. I got into certain places. I learned a lot of things. Do you guys want to hear this? Because this is game changing. It's game changing. They told me success slash creating slash healing is not personal. They said all of us that can't create, we make it personal. We make it personal, but it's not personal. It's structural. And this is so big. Just, just stay with me for a second on this. There's a guy named Warren Buffett. He's created from, from scratch the third most money on the planet right now. Warren Buffett. Guess what? He lives in the same small house. It's like a $300,000 house. Didn't get a big house. He has McDonald's every single day, drinks Coca-Cola. He is a complete creator. At one time in his life, him and his wife weren't really getting on, but he didn't want a divorce. He said, I love you. So he, he found a way for his wife for them to stay together. And his wife was completely okay with it. She moved to San Francisco, helped her live a great life. And she was fine that he then had a mistress. He had someone at his house, another girlfriend. And, and I think to myself, I go, wow, that's not for me, but what a creator. He has McDonald's every day. He has this, and he's got hundreds of thousands of people. Give me a yes. If you can see that that's very different to the person telling you, you got to be vegetarian and alkaline and you got to do all these special things and think a certain way. Give me a yes if you see it's true. What about Oprah, right? What about Oprah? What about what about Michael Jackson? He didn't he didn't make success personal. How about Lady Gaga crying before she goes on stage because she still feels like a loser? What am I trying to tell you? Is there's a difference between what we're told and what's actually true about creating? When I see the people who have truly made success on the planet, they didn't make it about them. They didn't make it about them. It was a structure. And, and this, is, this is so big, and I'm gonna give you the structure of creating. It's, it's so big when you understand 
my desired reality doesn't make my life better. I'm truly satisfied now and I want to create. Creation to me now, it's like turning up to, to a restaurant and saying, oh, I'm going to have the chicken or the fish, right? I'm going to have the chicken or the fish. It doesn't make or change my life. I'm the same guy. Right? I'm going to have a million or 10 million. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be broke. I'm going to, I'm going to be confident. I'm going to be shy. It's not about me. It's about just understanding I'm the same. So I may as well feel good. Right? I may as well just feel good now because success not about me. Who gets that point? Get just, I want to see. Where's the chat box? Give me number one if you get that first point. Thanks, Kerry. Good to see you on. I may as well just feel good because success not about me. Right? Where's everyone else? Who can see the chat box? Give me one or if you've only got the little hand up, do the hand up. Yeah, so, so just, just think about this. Is, uh, how many of you would like to make more money, right? There's so much misinformation about money. One of the worst ones is people say, oh, money's an energy. You know, what a, what a load of rubbish. Money is a measurement. It's a measurement. All it does is measure something. Okay? It's a structure. It measures something. And so what does it measure? What does it measure? It measures the amount of value you've provided to another human being in a way they want to pay for it. Money measures value you've provided to another human being in a way they want to pay for it. And what is value? Value is you've either increased satisfaction to that human or decreased pain. That's it. Money's structure. Money's structure. It's got nothing to do with time. Whoever wrote in time. Nothing to do with time. Time's just a way to deliver the value. Who gets it? So who now understands what I mean is it's a structure. It's a structure. It's got nothing to do with you. See, I can feel abundant and make lots of money. I can feel, I can feel broke and make lots of money. Guys, I've had millions of dollars in my bank account and felt broke. And I've had $20 in my bank account and felt rich. It doesn't matter. Your way you are doesn't relate. It's a measurement. It's a measurement. It's not an energy. It's not. It's, it's numbers, you know, that's a fiat currency that's just made up that is used for us to measure uh, which is interesting. It's blowing me away. So guys, this is why our work is so important. We need coaches in this work to teach this stuff. And uh, let me just ask you, how many of you would love to be a coach? Get certified and understand, first off, structure. Okay, structure is really important. Just getting someone into the creative structure is mind blowing to them, you know, because people come to me in the problem structure and they say to me, Oh, Chris, you know, uh, I've got anxiety. Can you fix it? I say, No, but I can help you create confidence. They say, Chris, I've got a broken relationship. Can you fix it? No, but I can help you create love. I can help you create. I can't fix anything. The world is focused in the problem orientation. And it's a big, it's funny, it's a big problem, but it is, it's focused on the, it's focused on the problem orientation. And so what happens is in life is every single person out there is so focused on what they don't want. So focused on the problem. They never get to have what they love. They never get to have what they love. So let me ask you, can I just, can I cover a little bit more before we do the session? Are you guys enjoying this? Cause I've got I want to explain how this happens. I want to explain to you how this happens, how we end up in this problem structure. Oh, someone said, can you go deeper? We, we've got a, a six day course we run and uh, you know, I'm just giving you the, the intros, intro, intro. So, so what happens is we start off as a pure creative spirit. We start off as a pure creative spirit and we have, we have it all. We're inside our mother. We're inside our mother. We have it all. We're loved. We're fed. 
We're cared for, we're carried around, we have it all. We have it all. And so we're pure creative spirit, we have it all. What happens is then, well, we're born. And when we're born, we step into a world where we don't have it all. And we get wounded by that fact. We get wounded because we have to go through individuation. Individuation. Which is when we realize that we're not our mother. <laughs> there's a point when we are basically our mother. We are completely connected. And then there's a point where we have to then suddenly realize who's a parent and has seen when their kid actually realized that they're, they're an actual, wow, I've, I'm actually, I've got arms and look at this. I'm, who's, who's seen that? They actually go, wow, I met. What happens is when they get in, uh, wounded, they realize that they don't have it all. It's not automatically, it's not automatically done. Okay. So what happens is every single one of us, we then make up beliefs. We make up beliefs and structures to resolve the pain. We make up beliefs and structures to resolve the pain. So how does that look? It's so we go, hey, well, I don't just get love anymore. I'm sent off to play school. Hey, I don't just get food anymore. I have to go, oh, all right. So we make up a belief that says, I must to get, someone help, can you guys help me fill in this statement? I must to get. Let's see what you guys have got. I must be a good boy, a good girl to get love. I must work hard to free my parents. I must make jokes to get attention. I must be better. I must, see, I must be nice. I must be worthy. I must work hard at school because to get dad's attention. And some people get really bad ones. Like I must stay quiet to not get beaten. I must, uh, I must not enjoy life because I was a mistake. See, so every single one of us, we, we make up these beliefs to resolve this pain that we, we no longer just have what we want. And so what happens is, is we then get orientated to these beliefs. And what that means is we learn, this is just how it is. So we move from I have it all to I don't have it all to I must to get and then, well, this is just how it is. This is just how it is. This is just how it is. So we decide this is how it is here. This is just how it is. So for me, I'll share mine. I must be successful to save my father. That's my whole structure. I, I played international sport. I went to university. I started businesses. I made all this money. And it was, that was how I thought the world is. You see? Because that orientation of how it is, that creates reality. That creates your reality. Now, this is a big divider. Because most people never get out of this. They never get out of this, this structure. This is the problem-orientated structure. This is the problem-orientated structure. So a lot of people, they say, well, I've got, to, I've got to fix myself, right? I must fix myself uh, because I'm broken to, you know, to become perfect. I must 
become super educated so I don't make mistakes. And we make these up and then that becomes our life. And we just stay there in this problem orientation. And then because we've got an idea of fixing ourselves, we then end up finding our way to healing and personal development and everything else. And guess what this is? This just becomes this. We move forward and back and forward and back and forward and back and our current reality never changes. We just stay there. We never have what we desire. We never have it. We never have it. Who's getting this? Do you guys want to see the other half? Right? We just, who, but who, who's here? Like we just, we just stay there, hey? And, and so, so here's what we do in this work. Okay, the first thing is we've got to understand that this line here, okay, this is the awakening. This is the awakening. This is when you start to become super conscious. That's the awakening point here. So the first thing, the first thing we must do is we must recode and have it all now. We do this by entering the wizard's gate, which I'll explain and we're going to go through today. We enter the wizard's gate to have it all now. Here's what you've got to get from me. There is nothing you can't have now. Nothing. Nothing. Tell me something that you think you can't have now and I'll explain to you exactly how you can have it now. There's nothing you can't have now because everything that you desire is actually invisible. Kerry says a million dollars. I knew someone would try to challenge me. You ask yourself, what would have, what would that, what would I get from doing that? Right? So a million dollars and you would go, well, it would get me freedom. There's no way, no reason that you can't feel freedom right now. Feel safety right now. You see, there's no reason you can't feel that way now. You can't have it now. See, the idea that we want those things only can come from a place when we're not trying to fix our current reality. See, until we completely satisfied now, we feel abundant now, you're not ready to have that because you will block it. Until you get here, when you're in the wizard's gate and you're happy with now, you will never allow yourself to have that, that, those nice things, right? You'll never allow yourself to have it because your identity, your emotions, the, all of this will get in the way. So until, until you take the first step and your current reality is equal to your desired reality, I'm truly satisfied now and I choose to create and my desired reality doesn't make my life better. Until you get there, this wizard's gate, you are stuck over here trying to solve your current reality. This is the first thing we do with coaching. That's the first thing we do with coaching. Does that make sense, everyone that typed in? Do you get that, Eric? Do you get that, Connor? Cool. Cool. So that's step one. Yeah, cool. That's step one. Okay. So by doing that, by getting in there, getting into no resistance and no desire, which is the, the wizard's gate, you get there. The next thing that you step into is you must create your magnetic mind. Because your mind is a, a sender and a receiver. So you will only, you will see it when you be it. So you, you then learn how to create your magnetic mind, but you can only create your magnetic mind from a place where you truly know that that thing you're creating don't change you. You're already good. In fact, you're better. You're, there's nothing wrong with now. You can never create from a place of lack. You can never create from a place of frustration. You've got to get here first. You must enter the wizard's gate first. 
Until you understand how to enter this, you can't then create the big things. You'll just be caught in an oscillating pattern that will end up where, where, you, know, where you are. Then the third step is you get to then live from a creative orientation. And that's when you can turn your thoughts to reality. And you come back and you are back where you started. But now I have it all in this reality. And you master the human journey. You become the predominant predominant creative force. That's what we do here. That's what we do here. Not creating space, Kimberly, completely entering the wizard's gate of no desire and no resistance. It's step one. A lot of the, the religious texts talk about step one and then they took out the other steps. Right. So who's, who's enjoyed this so far? You must, the wizard's gate is done by getting to a place where, where you are, you feel anything that you, you there's nothing you desire. You're all good. Nothing's going to change you. Nothing will desire. It's, it, it takes some, un, it takes some work guys. Like, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I just said, oh yeah, you just shift. This shift, you know, it, to, for me to go through this, it took me a long time to, to truly get here. Then when I got here, then I could create the magnetic mind and I could go. See, my biggest problem that I see, and I love, I love Dispenza, I love Robbins, I love Gabrielle Bernstein, I love the Emotion Code, I love them all. The biggest problem that I have is they screw more people up than they actually help. And the reason is, is everyone collapses themselves to have a problem first and they just keep them stuck in this. I must fix myself. I must fix myself instead of, instead of getting into the wizard's gate and just being completely fine with it, then creating. And uh, that's why I'm doing this work. That's why I'm here. So I'll finish off uh, before we, we're gonna do, we're gonna do some work now. I love them, Kate. I love them. I love them all. I love every single one of them. And man, I wouldn't be here without them. I just really strongly believe and know that if you still try to solve problems, if you try to solve problems, you will always stay anchored and orientated to that old reality and you'll never get into the flow creation that I've experienced, right? Because you're too busy trying to have the right emotion or the right this. So let me tell you a little story. Who's, who's read Lynn McTaggart's book, The Power of Eight? Who's read that book? Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about Lynn. She's amazing, by the way, and she created all this scientific uh, experiments around the power of intention, okay? So she was able to, you know, you know, with Dr. Emoto, they, they worked together, they changed the structure of water, they increased the pH of water, they made plants grow faster, all with the power of intention. And then what happens is she then goes, well, I wonder if we can heal people, okay? So this is fascinating stuff, fascinating stuff. So she starts healing. They create these circles. They start healing people just with intention. And what she finds is it's the one sending the healing, not just the one sitting in there getting the prayer that are getting results. Okay. So, so person A has a group around all sending love and healing to them. And person B, C, D, they're all sitting in the circle. What Lynn did to her credit, is she tracked both the people doing the healings and the ones actually healing. Now, the ones getting the healing got pretty good results, okay results. But do you know what was statistically a huge, huge, huge result? Kerry's just put the link in, but I'm going to blow the book for you. She said that the people doing the healing got greater results in their life than the ones getting healed on. 
And it's curious, you gotta ask yourself, why are the ones doing the healing getting all these amazing results, healing cancers, so uh, helping relationships come together? Why is that happening? Why is that happening? And she goes, well, it's the rebound effect. When you get into gratitude and you get into giving and service, you know, that's what's rebounded back to you, right? So I'm reading this book and as I read this, I get to the end and I sit there and I think and I go, how has she missed it? How has she missed exactly what happened? And that's when I decided I better get out there and teach this because here's what she missed. Here's what she missed. All those doing the healing were not focused on their problems. They were just focused on creating because they were creating a healing structure for the other people. The person sitting in the circle, the whole group said, you got a problem and we're going to heal you. So they could only, they, the problem always had to exist. Everyone else in the circle just went into the end result of healing. They just went straight into a magnetic mind. They were completely fine with where they are. They were just being of service. Blew my mind. I sent her an email. I haven't heard back. I sent her an email. So, guys, this is very exciting stuff. Um, we're going to do a cool recode, and we're going to get into all of this, but... We are, uh, but what we do is step number one, we, we decide, we choose what we will create, okay? Number two, once we, once we step into it, we're going to ask ourselves, how does that feel? Number three, we're going to, once we go into that, we're going to simply create a measurement which is where am I now compared? We create a measurement. Now this is very important. By going into what we're creating, we're starting out as creators, not as problem solvers, okay? So someone says, I've got anxiety. We first say, what would you like to create? We say, how does that feel compared to that? Where are you now? Then, once we understand what we're creating and where we're now, we simply unpack the resistance and recode. Once we recode, it's very simple. We take aligned action. Now, this is the structure of healing. This is the structure of creating. This is the structure of coaching. And this is how, by doing this, and we do this weekly, this is how we get the person over here, through to here, and over to here as quick as possible. Because what we're doing is we're making the current reality the same as the desired reality, so that the desired reality doesn't make life any better, see? Because success isn't personal, we get them into it, we get them into it now, create a measurement, unpack and take aligned action. We do this weekly and guys, I've got to say, we need more coaches. I need more coaches to share this work, to get this out. So, we're going to do the recode now. Who's excited about doing the super conscious recode work? And uh, give me a yes if you are. I'm just sitting down so we can do it. Cool. So who saw the video of me doing the super conscious recode um, on a couple of women who had a choice of being speakers? Yeah. So I didn't fix them. 
We just chose for them to be powerful speakers. Just like I can help you choose to be healthy, I can help you choose and we can create shifts like that by tapping into the super conscious aspect of us. So we have three different levels of consciousness, okay? The, the first is self-conscious. The self-conscious, also known as ego, knows that it's a person, okay? It started around about seven years old and the self-conscious wants to be a good version of you, wants to live a good life, self-consciously good life. It, 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 it thinks it's gonna die at some point. That's it, self-conscious. The next level of consciousness is the unconscious. The unconscious ran the ship from age zero to about six or seven, or sometimes earlier with people as the conscious, self-conscious came in. Now the unconscious, only wants to survive, okay? So the unconscious took what was in its surroundings and said, these are the beliefs, these are the structures that I need to have to survive. The third level of consciousness that really doesn't get talked about that often is the superconscious. The superconscious is the part of you that took a sperm and an egg, came together, created a cell, created a heartbeat that turned into you. Does that make sense? It's got innate intelligence. It's where your intuition lies. It's where all the physiological instructions lie. It's your genius. It's the, it's the part of you that will never die. And it's the part of you that is just connected to your parents and eternal, okay? The superconscious is the originator. It's more you than anything you can imagine in this lifetime. It, the, the soul or the spirit enters the human being in, after four weeks. At four weeks, boom, boom, the heartbeat is on. So this is before the spirit even enters. This is a superconscious intelligence. And so... I was going through all these works and guys, I got certified in NLP twice. I did all of Joe Dispenza's work, Matrix Energetics, EFT. I did all of Tony Robbins stuff, spent years with him, um, trained over 1500 people in neurolinguistics, hypnosis, success strategies. I was just obsessed about trying to figure this all out. And I started to get really excited. You know, you, you said in the last like five or six, maybe even 10 years, Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden and Lynn and these people started to come out with all sorts of things. And the, the problem that I found, you know, Psych K, Emotion Code is, is, you know, number one, they're under the wrong structure. But then number two, it seemed to take so long. Like, yeah, you got to sit in meditation to completely recall. I was just like, really? I do not have an hour 45 minutes to sit in a meditation, no matter how much I love and respect you, I don't have that. And through that prayer, I got introduced to, uh, yeah, and as Jeremy said, in a lot of time, the problem comes back. I got introduced to a lady who's now one of my best friends on the planet, and her name's Colette, and she, she's a psychotherapist. And so she'd spent the last 30 years helping people with, with deep, deep things, you know, multiple personalities, schizophrenia, OCD problems. And she'd come across some work about a decade before I met her of Dr. Gary Flint, who is a psychiatrist from Canada and an amazing guy and, and not that many people know about his work. And he, he understood how personality shapes who we are. And he'd found a way, okay, is um, I love, I love Richard Bartlett, Victoria. And so, so I get to this point and I'm with her and she teaches me how to connect to my super conscious and teach it to recode all my memories, okay? So just so you guys get this, we have the super conscious, unconscious, self-conscious. All of these have memory. 
The memory is what creates the belief and emotions, which then change our focus, which creates our reality. So a lot of people try to just create change self-consciously. So they will go and read books and, and try to, you know, talk mantras and affirmations. But the truth is the unconscious doesn't want to change. So unless you program it inside its own structure, it won't, it won't do it. Then the unconscious, the problem with the unconscious is it doesn't want to change. Who's ever found that? Imagine hypnosis and NLP, their premise is you're going to change with the unconscious, but it, it wants to stay the same. The superconscious, however, precedes all of them. And what you'll find is the superconscious loves, loves to change. The unconscious hates change. The superconscious loves to change. So what we do, okay, and we're about to do the process, is I connect to the superconscious and I say, hey, superconscious, do you see this new desired reality that we're trying to create? And the superconscious goes, yes, yes, I see the desired reality that the self-conscious is trying to create. And we go, great. Okay, so here's the current reality. The current reality is we've got all of these beliefs, etc., that are blocking the action to there. And it's sabotaging us. And the superconscious goes, oh yeah, I can see that because all of the resistance, all of the beliefs, all of them are positive. They're all created by the unconscious in some sort of survival mechanism that you needed in your early years of life. Can everyone give me a thumbs up or a yes if that makes sense? All of the beliefs were created from a memory that served you at some point in life. But guess what? They don't even have to be yours. The studies now show, without a shadow of a doubt, seven generations of trauma is passed down through the DNA. Think about where your ancestors were seven freaking years ago. Kimberly says, but now it's a tyrant. It's actually not, Kimberly. If you, if you sit in the problem reality, you're really going to have a hard time with this. It's actually keeping you safe. It's only, and just let me give me a yes when you get it, it's only against you, what you're now trying to create. But it's still for you. You see, that's what we've got to say. There's no problem. I want everyone to get that. We're not fixing it. There's no problem with this. This was designed this way to keep it safe. So we connect to the superconscious. Superconscious goes, oh, yeah, I see that. And we just go, hey, we don't want that structure anymore, even though it's good. We don't want to have fish anymore. We're going for lasagna. We're just going to change to this. And like that, when I do the commands and connect to it, all of this resolves itself and the current reality becomes the desired reality and it's freaking amazing. Okay. So I'm about to do it, Kimberly. We're going to do the work. So I want you to imagine that you've got a, a playing field. Okay. And your goal is at the end of the field and you're here. Your goal is at the end of the field and you're here. And when I do the work, it's going to be like I've asked all the resistance to come up in front of you. And they're going to be like little gophers. You know, like those little animals that, will, that can come out of the dirt and they leave a little pile of dirt. And your superconscious is going to remember all the resistance, all of this that pops out in the way between where you are and what you want. And when I do the commands the superconscious will just kind of like grab a feather and in the perfect way, in the perfect order, will sweep all of the dirt back in. Okay. Now it's not hypnosis. So you're, you're not in trance. You're here with me the whole time yet. It is closed eyes. Okay. Uh, it's not meditation, but it does feel a little bit meditative as you do it. What it is, is I'm going to access your superconscious field 
which is uh, an instruction that you can you can give me permission to. It's done remotely, it's done through groups, and it's going to be a wild experience for all of you. So I'm ready. Is everyone here ready? So question number one. What would you like to create? What would you like to create? Please type it in or give me a number one if you're just writing it down. So I'm going to say, I would like to create a thousand certified magnetic mind coaches making hundred thousand or more each all right that's what i want to create okay so either number one either give me number one or write in what you've done okay so the second step is we're going to tune into it and we're going to experience it as though it's done now. Okay. This is important because it's going to help us to understand what needs to shift. Okay. So I'm going to ask you in a second to close your eyes and just, we're going to go into having it now. Okay. So you're all ready. I think just choose one choice, one choice not two, not a health and a business one, not freedom from anything. You, do, you can't create freedom from anything. You can only create what you're creating. So what would you love? What would you love? You can't create away from, you can't create in the problem reality. Katie, there's about a hundred people on here. You'll have to type it in again. Uh, confidence. No, it's not all right. But confidence, creating confidence is good. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to say no doubts, no fears. Um, look, you can have confidence and you can still feel doubt and fear. I think uh, a lot of successful people still feel doubt. See, it's just create confidence. We don't want to write on here that we don't want, um, yeah, create confidence then. Yeah, you don't want it. You never can be in the problem reality, okay? Because then that always will be there and you're trying to fight something. And, and just think about how the things that society tries to fight never work. The war on drugs, for example. The war on drugs, you know? The war on cancer. The war, the fight never can, can win because, actually, let me give you a bit of an example. So, you know, prohibition happened and, you know, you couldn't have alcohol. Then all of a sudden they decided, you know what, the mafia is supplying the alcohol. We may as well just allow alcohol to come back. Well, what happened was there was an agency that was dedicated just for the war on alcohol. So then there were all these people, once alcohol became legal again, that didn't have a job. So you know what they did? They went, you know what? We better do something. Let's have a war on marijuana. And they just started having a war on something else. And I think it's such a great example in time in history to, to realize, you know, if you have got a war on being broke, you know, you might create money, but you'll still feel broke because that's what you're fighting. You never became okay with yourself first. Cool. I don't even know what that means, Mercedes, but let's, you know, like it, it seems this, it seems very abstract. It seems very abstract, right? What is that? Yeah. Let's just choose to create something. I'm very, something about me is I like to take my thoughts and turn them into reality. So I like to just, that, that's what I'm about. I'm about creating. So I don't know how to create a pillar of inner flame and power. Uh, like it's, don't know what that is. So we want to, my point is, you know, you want to create something. So you choose, you choose it. I want to have this in my life. I want to have more money. I want to have a healthy body. I want to have a great relationship. I want to have awesome thing with my kids, right? Yeah. So my, my point would be is like, 
uh, well, how do you know you created that? You know, it's, it's um, cool. Okay, so I think we all got it. So I'm going to close my eyes with you. So I'm not going to be, um, Gabrielle, just choose one. <laughs> just choose one. Four bedroom house, a 300K business, beautiful body. No, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's just choose one. Okay, so close your eyes. Close your eyes right now. I'm going to close mine so I'm not looking at the, the screen. And just in your mind, just, just, just follow through with what I'm saying. I choose the end result of. I choose it. I choose it. And it feels like, it feels like, and then just feel it. So I've chosen to have, and it feels like. So I'll say mine out loud. I've chosen, I have, I have chosen a thousand magnetic mind certified coaches making six figures each and it feels like I'm making a difference. It feels like love. It feels like contribution. It feels like when I, it feels like I can, it feels so good. So can you see, what can you see now that you have this? What can you hear? What can you feel? So I, for me, I see them. I see them in front of me. I see them, you know, on Facebook showing me their live audiences and their coaching testimonials. I see it. I feel it. I'm hugging them. I'm loving them. So go into it now. What would it be like if you had that end result now? What would it be like? How would it feel? How good would it feel? How would it feel? Allow yourself to feel it. What would it be like to have that right now? What would life be like? What would others say about you? What would you say about you? What would you have? What would you be? Who would you help? How would it feel? I feel great. All right, come back to me. Open your eyes. Cool. Come back to me. So give me number two if you did number two and it felt good. Great. Look at all those twos come in. Okay. So that's number two. Okay. So number three is we want to create a measurement. Okay. Dr. Bartlett helped me with this with Matrix Energetics. Everything create a measurement. What, what am I creating? What's now? Okay. So I just want you to measure compared to that, what's now like? What's now like? And just create a measurement and, and just give me a number three or, or type in what it's like once you've created the measurement. So what's now like compared to that? See how we don't get negative about the now. There's no problems. Just what is it? Right? Just what is it? Measurement. So measure where you are now compared to that. Compared to number compared to the end result, where are you now? Nice. Okay, so that's number three. So now we're going to do number four and we're gonna unpack all of our resistance. Okay, so my first question is super conscious. I just want you to type these in. What beliefs do you have, what beliefs have you created that stop you having this goal? What beliefs are in the way? What beliefs are in the way? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about the goal? What do you believe you need to do? What are your beliefs? What emotions do you have now that don't belong in the future reality? What emotions are there now that aren't there? Fears, worries, anxieties. Good. 
the more you put out there now, the more the superconscious and, and I can recode in a second. And so just explore this a bit more, you know, how are you conflicted about this goal? Parts of you want it, but parts of you don't. I'd really like this goal, but I'm scared of failing. I'd really like this, but I'm scared of judgment. I'd really like this, but I failed before. I'd really like this, but what would mum, dad, cousin, brother think? I really would like this, but I'm not sure I want it. That's a great sabotage pattern. Not even sure I really want it. Well, you're never gonna know unless you get it. Awesome. Okay, so once you feel like you've got enough stuff there, or even if you're still just unpacking it, I want you just to make a rating, okay? So let us know how much resistance you have in your field, okay? 10 out of 10 resistance is you're swimming upstream. Zero resistance is you just lying back, the stream's just gonna take you there. So can everyone give me out of 10 how much resistance they feel to this choice? Up, cool. Okay, so we're going to do the uh, the recode now, and uh, all you have to do. Oh, that's cool. There's uh, there's three of you here. Are you all into in the to win the the full certification? Cool. Ten eight six. Okay, cool. So we're going to do the recode. So for you. Uh, all you've got to do is close your eyes and um, and listen to my commands. Um, and all you got to do is is listen to my commands, and I'll get that resistance down. We'll go through it. You don't have to do anything, but be present. Just notice what it's like. Okay. I'll go through one, one or well, maybe I'll go through four or five commands and then um, I'll ask you all to come back, see how you're all doing. The only thing you have to do is energetically give me permission to connect to your superconscious. Uh, and so if you're willing for me to connect to your superconscious and for this to, uh, to, have, a, to have a brilliant and amazing experience, then uh, just, just give me a yes and uh, energetically, you don't even have to type it in if you don't want to. And um, and let's and let's let's do it. So just just close your eyes. Just close your eyes, and and my eyes are closed now, so don't expect me to answer in the chat box. So just close your eyes, and in your mind, in your mind, just 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 say the words in your mind. I give Chris Duncan permission to connect to my superconscious. I choose to get the most out of this. There you are. Just choose, I give Chris Duncan permission to connect to my superconscious and get the most out of this experience. Great. Just give me a second. Keep your eyes closed and stay in the process until I ask you to open them, please. Superconscious, are you there? Yeah. Superconscious, please bring up all the resistance to this choice into the active experience. And I want you to imagine a big beam of light going right through your base chakra, right through up your spine and out. a big light, gold light. Superconscious, do you see all the emotions that stop this choice? Yes. Please treat and do a massive change history on all the emotions that are causing resistance. Thank you. Superconscious focus it on the emotions of worry, fear, 
doubt. Please treat the massive change history and everything is needed. Thank you. You don't have to do anything, so just stay and just breathe and just notice. Just be aware, stay aware. Superconscious, do you see the original event? In this timeline or a past timeline, can you go there now? Yes, do you see the decisions, the trauma and the memories? Yes, please treat and do a massive change history on the original event that's causing all the resistance. Thank you. Superconscious, please raise everyone's vibration. Please set their frequency and vibration at nine, 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 nine. So be it, so it is. Now be a witness. There you go. Superconscious, please treat all body systems related to stress, all chakra points, endocrine systems pituitary glands on all aspects of body systems causing resistance, chakras front and back and everything else is needed. Thank you. Just stay present. It's, you're, you're doing great. Superconscious, do you see belief systems passed down from family and DNA patterns? Please treat and do a massive change history and everything is needed. Thank you. Superconscious, do you see the part-time personalities causing conflict in this structure? Yeah. Please bring out all the part-time personalities that are causing structure. The inner child, the inner critic, the pleaser, the people pleaser, the protector controller, the wounded child, please bring out all part-time personalities that have got something to say about this choice. And superconscious, please do a full recode and treat all aspects of these personalities so they can join the main personality and action can occur. Thank you. Just imagine that yellow gold, gold light just kind of shining down through all things that have been brought up and allowing them just to melt away. Just allowing them to melt away. When, when trauma and pain are treated, memory turns to wisdom. Superconscious, please treat future events and worries about unintended consequences. Thank you. Just imagine you're gathering all the resistance up in front of you, like when you gather leaves on a, uh, you know, as they fall on the ground or as you, you gather toys up into, into a basket. I just want you to, to gather everything, all the resistance that's in the way. It's like this big pile of trash in front of you. 
all these old beliefs and structures, worries and fears, old relationships. Super conscious, do you see this pile? Is there anything that needs to be added? Yes, please add everything that needs to be super consciously recoded today. Super conscious, please treat everything in this pile in the perfect way and in the perfect order. Do everything as needed. Thank you. And just allow that to be treated and just have a few big breaths as it's just coming down. It's like it's just being melted down and, you know, going, going away evaporating it's like it's evaporating turning to steam evaporating Superconscious, can you treat the left side of the body, including the jaw and the ears? Thank you. So a massive change history and everything is needed. All right, so I'm gonna check in, see how everyone's going. If you'd like to open your eyes and come back. How is everyone? Doing good. Wow. Incredible. Lots of shifts. So relax. Goosebumps. Feel lighter. Calm. So when you think about that choice, is there any resistance left? Fingers buzzing, tingling top of head felt really good. When you think about going for that choice, is there any resistance left? And if there is, how much? So could you all give me your first number and the number it's at now. 10 to 6, 7 to 0, 6 to 2, huge swirling, 7, 0, 8, 2, 6, 1, 7, 2, 7, 2, no resistance, 5 to 0. Christopher does the... No, I don't think so, Patricia. 8 to 4... Four one eight two five one eight point five to zero three to one nine to two and dropping three ten to seven eight to five six to two nice eight to four cool so it's not about competing you no one knows what everyone else is uh, working on here you know so it doesn't matter where your resistance drops to it's just that we we can drop it. <laughs> you know and so we're going to do another round we can do another round but but just let me know type in a wow or amazing if you've just seen something you know done completely remotely right like this is this is net this is revolutionary stuff you know so it's it's incredible and we need more coaches much more so we're going to get everyone down to where they need to get to today. But sometimes if someone's processing a huge amount of grief or things, you know, it's, and, and you don't have to have a logical memory of it. Sometimes you can be processing an emotional trauma of four generations back on your father's side. So, 
you know, you just, you just take it and we just, we recode and we get it down. Cool. So, <laughs> that's epic. <laughs> Toos. Cool. So, uh, let's just choose to go and have another round, hey? So what you need to do is, again, close your eyes and give me permission. So in your mind, you say, I give Chris Duncan permission to connect to my super conscious and I choose to get the most out of this. So, so you do that. My eyes are going to be closed. I'll feel it when everyone's given me permission. So just close your eyes and give me permission. Super conscious, do you see this choice? Do you see the resistance? Please bring all the resistance into the active experience. Super conscious, do you see the alignment statements? I will do this. I can do this. I am doing this. Super conscious, do you see how those statements relate to a feeling of fear of failure? Yes. Super conscious, please treat and do a massive change history and everything is needed on those statements and the fear of failure and unintended consequences. Please do a full super conscious recode and massive change history. Thank you. Keep breathing, big breaths. Super conscious, do you see that? Yes. Please treat that part of us that just doesn't, can't be bothered, doesn't want to do it. There's, a, there's an identity that needs to die right now. Super conscious, do you see that identity? Do you see the fear of letting go? Yes. Super conscious, please recode that identity, allow it to be stored for when we need it later. It's not needed right now. Please treat into a massive change history and everything is needed. Super conscious, do you see that fear of doing whatever it takes? Treat it. Do a massive change history so that this structure is all in. Reinforce this choice with determination, no stone unturned, whatever it takes. Masculine focus. Superconscious destruction needs masculine energy and focus, determination. Please treat all fears of ourself, worries about burnout and being overwhelmed. No, being super, con super conscious to a massive change history and everything is needed on that.
superconscious. Do you see that? What is that? Hmm. The metaphor of a, a, a warrior going to battle and losing and upsetting a family warrior, soldier, samurai, masculine, death. Superconscious, do you see that? Yes. Right. Please treat all the grief, the vows, the sorrow, the the pain associated with that metaphor. Please treat and do a massive change history and everything is needed, including memories one, two, and three, and a full super conscious recode on all other aspects of consciousness. And if there's anything else that needs treatment, please treat it now and ground all the memories down into the matrix of the universe. Tag all aspects of consciousness ready for treatment next time. Have a few big breaths and come back to now. And just the same as last time, let me know how it went. Cool. Cool. So my eyes are a bit blurry right now. Can't, can't, can't see what's on there. Cool. You didn't fall asleep if you came back when I said come back. I got you, Suze. I was there for you. I seen you. Just love you, that's why. So, where's everyone at? If you, if you now think about that choice, where's the resistance? Zero, nil. Beautiful, zero, no resistance, it's me, none, sky's the limit. So once we unpack resistance, now there's an action to take. You must ground it in reality. Four, three, and zero. Well, those are some big shifts. That's right, Connor, that's a zero. Now you must take action. Now when it comes to action, I wanna share something, okay? There is both feminine and masculine action. Feminine action in society we call procrastination. But it's not, it's just getting yourself centered and grounded. So sometimes it's a feminine action, sometimes it's a masculine action, but it's always an action. Sometimes it's feminine, nurture, take care, look after. Sometimes it's masculine, go for it. You can't just always do masculine. You can't just keep planting seeds, trying to grow a forest. You have to nurture it. So this is what we do here. And it's good to nurture sometimes, and then sometimes you've got to go take action. All right, we're all masculine and feminine. I'm not talking about genders here, I'm talking about energetically. Masculine, go for it, attack, plant the seed. Feminine, water, nurture, take care. Yeah, it isn't, it isn't, it isn't procrastination. It isn't, it's just a feminine action. And I take feminine actions all the time. Self care, looking after ourselves. All right, so this is what we do. This is the work. Now you tell me, 
How much does the world need this work? A hundred out of 10 or a million out of 10? The world needs this work. We have a world suffering, thinking they got to, they got to take medication to feel good. They got to do all these things that they got to go to the gym because they're fat. They got to do all these things. They're stuck here. They're stuck just, just in their wounded childhood, childhood individuation process. They're stuck here. They're stuck here. And all the gold in the alchemy process of turning lead into gold happens in the awakening. First, you recode to have it now. Then you create your magnetic mind. When you see it, you'll be it. You live from a creative orientation. You turn your thoughts into reality and you come back to being a pure creative spirit. This is our work. This is our work. This is what we do. This is a magnetic mind process. This is what we do. And I need lots more coaches. I need lots more coaches. I need to teach you how to tune in to the super conscious. I need to show you how to create what you love so that you're an example. The certification process, guys, is uh, unbelievably transformative for yourself. Who wants to do this work for themselves? Who knows? And even if they've done a lot of other things, they've been stuck in the problem orientation. So first, we're going to be working on you. We do up to three recodes every single, four recodes every single week. Then we step into magnetic mind. We create it first. We got to be it. Then we will see it. Then we create and we get into, we get into and we create, we become the gods of our being. We become the gods of our being. And so the magnetic mind certification, we work on you. We show you how to, by the way, just give me a yes. If you want to learn how to uh, do that process I just did. Did you just see a hundred odd people from all around the world uh, have a huge shift, right? So instead of me doing a hundred one-on-one sessions, I've just done one session, right? I've helped all of you. See, I've been here for what, you know, an hour and 45 minutes, but I've helped hundreds of you. And the last thing we give you is all the marketing, all the marketing. So, who has got a little sneaking suspicion that I might know a little bit about marketing? Sneaking little, little nudge from the universe saying, yeah, he might know how to market. How did he get me to watch that YouTube ad? I never watch YouTube ads. <laughs> I never watch it, but I was watching his one. We give you all the marketing. We give you all the marketing. You get to use my demo videos to market your own business. All right? So that demo video that you guys watched on YouTube, you guys get that to give to people to show this is the work that I'm certified in. All right? And if that video blew you away, just think about just how easy you can get that out to people. So for what we have you charge people is, you know, very small. And if you can get your first 10 or 20 clients, in fact, I'll tell you a little bit about it. We, we help you set up a group um, exercise where you work, with, you work with people in a group on the internet. Can everyone just type that, out, that in? You know, I work in a group on the internet. That's how we do Magnetic Mind. It's groups on the internet. And what that means is wherever there's internet connection, wherever there's Wi-Fi, you can be helping people. And it's not just, it's not just one off. So you work in a group on the internet. Now, who likes the sound of that? Because you can be wherever you like to be. Now, here's what's great. We charge people $49 per person. Okay. So that's what you're going to charge people. So just type in $49, so 49 That's per week. They pay $49 per week. So it's group. It's on the, it's on the web. 
and it's $49 a week. That means once you have 10 people, you're earning $490 a week. $490 a week is going to be around about $2,000 a month. At 20 people, you're going to be earning uh, $980 a week. Okay, around about 4,000 a month. So I always say to people, I need you to get to about 40 clients because then you're earning $16,000 a month. Is that right? Yeah. Cool? No, not 16, I knew I'd done something wrong. $8,000 a month. Because it's double, $8,000 a month. Because at $8,000 a month times 12, that's when you're on 96K a year. Guys, give me a yes if you think you could send out my video. Who thinks they could send out my video and find 40 people who would be willing to do 49 bucks a week and they get three recodes Plus, they get uh, a university training, university online with all of the knowledge. See, when you sign someone up, when you sign someone up, we give them all of my education. So you go sign someone up for $49. They get me teaching all of the stuff, and we're only just scratching on the surface here. Does that make sense? So they get a huge education, plus they get you doing some recodes every week. At 40 people, there's your six figures, but ask me, who's figured it out? How many hours of coaching do you need to do a week to have 40 people? How many hours? There's three recodes a week, 40 people, how many hours? Three hours of coaching. Now, some of you wouldn't get out of bed for 8000 a month. Just double it, triple it. But that's three hours of coaching. Now, I'm not someone to try to give you uh, unrealistic expectations. You've got heaps of other things you're going to need to do, right? You're going to need to do some marketing and there'll be some bookkeeping. You know, there'll be, there'll be stuff, right? Like this is, I'm talking about a business here. I'm not saying that's all your hours. But that's how many, much coaching you need to do, even if there's 80 people. 180 people, a thousand people, right? And so it's just get yourself to 40 clients and then you're on eight grand a month. And then, and then you're, you're doing well. So uh, when you get certified, we give you all the practice, all the tools, all the training. Uh, there's a four day event that I'm doing in the United States. For those of you that are in the United States, I'm doing the four day super conscious creators in San Diego. Plus there's a two day course as well that you can come to. I'm going to be doing it in San Diego. Then I'm going to have future dates. I'm planning on being in Texas or Florida and then also coming over to the East coast as well. We do the same thing here uh, in Australia. So you can come to that, uh, which is awesome. So, so that's the course. Now, uh, a lot of you are, are here to win, uh, you know, win one of these, which is great. But, but let's be real. The real winner is the person who comes get certified and then lives their dream life. Not the person who gets it for free. Who agrees? That's the real winner. So look, you've all put your best foot forward. I'll see you inside the Facebook group. Uh, I love you all so much. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen it. I'm looking at your applications. Um, please, please do me one thing. Can you guys, uh, could you guys do one, one favor for me? I promise it's not going to be that hard. I would really love, I would really love some more reviews on my YouTube and my Facebook. Yeah, who else is doing it either way? Who else is who else is just in no matter what? We had someone, it's quite funny. We didn't really know what to do about this. She's like, I'm not missing out, Chris. I'm buying a second prize today. 
And if I win first, you can just refund me, but I'm not missing out on my second prize. <laughs> I just thought that was so cool. Okay. Here is the page for reviews on Facebook. But, but I, just, I just wanted to ask, you know, one of the hard things about coming out with something so revolutionary is very few people decide to write something positive. They might think it, but the people who decide to think something negative, they're quite happy to write something. So if I could just ask you guys that, uh, that are loving it to, uh, to jump in and give me a review, it, um, I'll read them and I'll really, really appreciate it. Good luck. I expect every single one of you who are on this live call, um, uh, your name will go in the hat. My question, if you haven't had a live phone call with one of my team, you're not going in the hat. But it, you might have put your number in wrong, right? You, we, we might be trying to call you. So I'm going to go post in the group, are you still waiting for a call? And uh, if you reply yes, and you haven't had your call, we'll make sure that you get it, okay? We're simply not putting someone in to win a $15,000 scholarship who we haven't spoken to. And I think you guys all get that. So if you've talked to someone, then that's good. So love you guys. Thanks for being on this. Uh, I know that I took like nearly two hours, but uh, this is just the intro, intro, intro. Thank you guys, have an absolutely amazing and awesome day, uh, evening, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Uh, someone just asked, when's the next recode? I just did this one uh, as a gift to you guys. If you're in the $49 class yourself, then you'll get them multiple times a week. But this was just, a, this was just random. This is it for now, bye.